Hey guys, how's it going? Brian here with Music Store Live. We're at the GNL factory on Fender Avenue, and I'm here with Dave Brown, and we're talking about all things GNL Custom Shop. Dave, how's it going, my man? Good, good, man. How you doing? Good, good. Well, before we get into it, man, let's get a real important question out of the way that okay. we like to ask um, everybody that we're going to sit down and interview. Uh, really, I think it's a great way to let everybody know kind of who you are human? right out the gate, you know? Okay. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Well, um, for home, peanut butter and jelly, definitely. Lightly toasted, a little butter, peanut butter toasted and jelly. Toasted peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Okay. Just slightly. Yeah. And some milk. Gotta have, it's gotta be cold. For going out, definitely Jersey Mike's, Italian <laughs> yeah, with yeah. Uh, Mikey's Way. Yep. That's uh, really, really good. I like it nice and oily and drippy. Classic. What kind of milk? Uh, it's going to have to be skim milk now. Skim? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it used to be a 2%er, went down to 1%, but now we're doing skim milk. Okay, but, um, all right. A whole milk only kind of guy myself. Yeah, it's too thick now for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to move on. We're going to talk about guitars, basses, um, and the GNL Custom Shop, right? So for a long time, you guys have been building custom guitars, right? Um, and we, you know, we've been selling GNLs uh, since we started um, uh, Music Store Live in 2010. And we've always done really, really well with GNL. We love them. I personally have owned a bunch. Um, you guys are actually Great building guitars. a GNL for me right now. Yeah. Um, and people have always known that you can pick and choose from various different things, woods, um, neck woods, fretboards, radius size of the fretboard, neck shape. Um, different colors, and you could get a custom GNL option um, in that regard. But now you guys have a real deal, bona fide custom shop, and it's yes. as good as anything out there. Um, and can you just kind of explain to the people what makes it a little bit different from what you've offered in the past, and what makes it so special in carrying on that Leo Fender legacy and tradition that you guys are so good at doing here? All right, well, um, we start off with our option order menu. So everybody knows, as you've mentioned, it's, it, you're able to pick the radius, uh, neck shape, uh, materials for the neck, materials for the body. But what we wanted to do is that would be, for a custom shop, that would be the starting point. So going notches above that would be selecting the type of wood down to the weight, uh, maybe the grain pattern. Some people, uh, one example would be ash. If somebody wants a straight grain pattern versus a more of a wavy, curvy looking grain for ash, yeah, it's yeah. just personal preference. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, one of the other things that we uh, that we're offering there too is um, not only is the the materials, but also the process in which these instruments are being made. They're started in the same area where the factory cuts the bodies with the CNCs, but from there everything is done by hand by us in the custom shop. So that's one of the main differences when customers want to get that next step level of service, um, that next level of attention to detail and uh, where they want to go, hey, I really like my GNL, but I'd like to do something different. Maybe there's a different color, something personal that they have that they want us to match, um, maybe different pickup configuration. Those are the things that we're offering in Custom Shop and that's what makes us different than the regular option order menu yeah yeah that's cool yeah it yeah. seems like it's perfect for the guy that wants a gnl they know that that's that's what they want but they just want it you know either a little bit more refined it could be anything from just looking nicer yep. right to maybe even having some tonal options that you can't get through the uh the, the built to order options menu that previously right. existed right right that's awesome and, and what if what if there's something that you know, because um, even in the new custom shop, there is kind of a little bit of an uh, a la carte menu that you kind of start with, yes. right? Uh, but what happens if somebody wants something that they don't they don't see on there? So basically, for the, the, the four main things that custom shop offers is um, the type of finish. So we're we're doing urethane finishes on standard models. We also do nitro finishes. Um, the other thing is the materials for the neck. For example, we're using a lot of uh, roasted maple we're using a lot of uh, we're even using wangi for some of the necks um, the other thing would be custom pickguard configuration as well as custom pickup configuration so maybe somebody will want uh, a third pickup added to their doheny mm -hmm. or maybe they want a humbucker in the neck position or their fallout those are the things that we're able to do in custom shop and and that's requires some engineering, but that's what we're there for, we're just to make sure that we're able to do those things. Short of somebody ordering, I want a circle guitar, 
well, we're going to do pretty much everything we can to try to accommodate the customer. Right, right. Oh, man. That, no yeah. circle guitars. <laughs> no, no circle guitars. And really, who wants that anyway? Yeah, it looks like a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's awesome. And, and it only seems natural, right, in the, the general progression of what GNL stands for, what GNL started off as, right? It was a company started by Leo Fender. Yep, exactly. Um, it is as, as authentic as anything out there. And... Um, and it's great to see, you know, of course, a lot of a lot of other guys have the custom shop and now you guys are in there. And like I said, it's as good as anything that's out there, which you, what you guys are doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you th when you think about what uh, Leo was doing back then is is uh, I, I don't think he really, really cared much about what logo was on the headstock. They were all his babies and and he always tried to improve on the on, on the same model. And so everybody, if they want to know what the latest iteration of their double cutaway offset instrument is you got to look at a legacy or an s500 if you want to look at the single cutaway one that's uh that basically started as a plank style guitar you know which is a telecaster you're looking at the a set so there's a lot of different things that he did with the basic foundation of the model but he didn't deviate so much away from the shape and what the thing was essentially so that's yeah that's really cool and that's what uh that's that's really need to be able to work on stuff like that even today. Yeah, I, I know for me at least that's definitely been uh, one of the things that's always drawn me to GNL right right away um, when I first started working with Music Store Live and got my first one. Um, and when I was doing sales at the time and people would call and the easiest way to explain it is you pick one of these up and it really just, it feels like the culmination of all of that work that Leo Fender did. Exactly. And, and it's kind of like, that's a little bit of an abstract thing, but at the same time, I feel like it's a very easy and simple way to explain it because it truly is. It's him, it's, it's the instruments that he was creating after he had put all of this extensive experience and information and things that he had learned and gotten better at doing. Yeah. And these are the final products that he exactly. was putting out. And then you guys are carrying on with that. Yep. So uh, that's that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So another question I wanted to ask, right, since we're talking about the custom shop and all the cool uh, fancy tone woods that you guys have. Um, and I don't know, I've talked to different luthiers that um, sometimes the answer to this question is the same, sometimes it's not. So I'm wondering, what is your favorite tone wood to work with? And does that happen to also be your favorite tone wood to have on a guitar or are those different? Okay, uh, one of my favorite tone woods to work with is ash. Um, I really like sanding ash. Um, I like the way it feels. Uh, it does require a little bit of extra work and grain filling whether it's swamp ash or regular ash. Uh, but um, again, oddly enough, I, I don't have that many ash bodied instruments at home. Uh, I maybe have three. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that maybe I should correct. Right, right. It, you know, um, but it's, it's really easy to work with. Uh, again, other than the grain fill. So some of the things that we do in the custom shop is we, we will sand this down to 220 first, get it ready then grain fill it and then sand it again. And that's the process that we go through. Uh, some people might grain fill it before sanding and then sand it down, but uh, we like to just sand it, see where it's at, and then uh, grain fill it and yeah. sand it and again. Yeah, and that's part of that hand finishing process yeah, exactly. that you get through the exactly. custom shop, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's really cool. And then also I see roasted ash yeah you got this roasted piece of ash here that is is really really cool and also representative of something that you can only get through the custom shop yes right? so this is torrified material so it basically means it's roasted and um, this one if you notice uh, has black accents in the grain that means it's already been grain filled so we use um, for the color that we're going to be doing this body in we want to uh, accentuate the grain pattern a little bit. We could use our regular tan uh, grain fill for this stuff, but I, I feel that the black grain fill, we also have red grain fill for this type of material, yeah. and you can smell it. it. It really smells roasty and uh, really, really neat. Oh, wow. And, uh, that, yeah, yeah, you really yeah. can, actually. Yeah, you can. <laughs> that's, that's pretty um, interesting. It makes it lighter. It also, if you dark roast it, this is medium roast stuff, so okay. you, can, you can order it with more, uh, more roasting done to it, which will give you a darker, darker uh, uh, end result on the on the wood itself. But um, this stuff here, uh, also, it, the darker it is, or the more more roasted it, it gets, uh, the more brittle it becomes. So you okay. have to be careful with it. But it's really easy to sand. Again, you have still have to grain fill it. It's really light in weight. Um, 
Maybe I need to get me one of these too. Yeah, I look mean, at uh, that. You know, the, the, the roasted ash is really a, really a cool look. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. now I have a question that is going to be fodder for all you internet trolls out there. Um, does roasting the ash change how it sounds in your opinion? I would say that yes, it does change the way it sounds. Um, it's because it's lighter, it's a little bit more um, porous, and um, it's going to make it sound a little bit warmer sounding. Yeah. But you know, again, the differences that we're talking about, roasted versus non-roasted, is, is is marginal. I yeah. mean, it's, it's only the finest of ears will be able to tell. And I'm sure there's some Eric Johnson fans out there that are going to be uh, going. I could tell just like Eric can, but um, right. yeah, this it's is just stuff that. I, I do think it changes the sound. And, and again, ash has its own particular sound uh, in and of itself when you compare it to other materials like alder and stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah this, this definitely does change the way it sounds. Yeah, I yeah. So. And I, th I mean, you know, who am I? But I think you hit it on the head and completely agree that yes, there's a difference, but it's small. It's a small difference. A lot of people are, you know, a lot of people out there going, oh, it's a night and day difference. Or people yeah. that are arguing that there is no difference because they can't hear it. In either case, there yeah. is, yeah, I would agree. It's a difference, yep. but it's small. When you have a whole band going full of instruments around you, yeah. are you going to hear the difference between that? Probably not, frankly. You're driving down the car, you know, you're driving in the car down the road and you hear a song and you go like, oh, that's definitely roasted ash on yeah, right. solo. Yeah, <laughs> right, come think, on. I don't yeah. think that happens, you <laughs> exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's, but I, uh, I feel like some people claim they can, but yeah. you're right, you're right. I'm totally right. <laughs> yeah, that roasted ash is really nice. We also use roasted alder, which again, um, I believe it also changes the sound. So alder's been a, a material that, uh, you know, I mean, just, I mean, Leo started using that in the, you know, late 50s and stuff. And, and it's it's a great, great material for, for bodies. Right. Um, it's uh, tried you know, and true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So uh, roasting it, I, I, I'm sure, adds a lot more mids or maybe even low end to it because, again, it, it makes it lighter. And uh, I, I just feel that just the, the, the body resonates a lot more. So you hear more low end and yeah. acoustically. I, I would hear these. You'd probably be able to hear it more often than not just acoustically without plugging it in because once you plug in a guitar, an electric guitar, um, most of the sound you're hearing is what's produced by the pickups. Right. right. I mean, that's right. basically right. the general idea that's probably gonna yeah. also draw some comments too right <laughs> let's have them but yeah yeah br bring it bring it on is tone wood a real thing yeah <laughs> um that's awesome man so my next question is going to be along the same lines of okay. what your favorite tone wood is to work with what's some of the most difficult or what is the most difficult tone wood that you have to work with in the custom shop by far it is uh buckeye burl yeah, we've been uh, we've been using that material now off and on for about a year and a half now, and I have an example of it here. Um, Buckeye burl, as as you know, is a is a burl is a it's an inclusion or a or a big giant cyst that uh, that will happen on a on the bottom of a tree, mm -hmm. usually about ground level or just below it, and um, it is rot that happens in the, within the trunk system, and uh, it becomes a giant burl, and uh, we dig it out of the ground and. For the most part, it's been used for furniture, tabletops, and then some uh, luthier out there, you know who you are, got the bright idea of putting this stuff on a, on a top like this. Uh, we're not making guitars out of it. This is on an ash body. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, there's a lot of voids and inclusions that need to be taken care of either with uh, different pieces of wood. So luckily these pieces here and the way the reason i glued it up like this is because this will be gone i don't have to worry about these that two neck, little neck voids here. That, the be neck there. pocket's going to be right here and, the cut out. and it'll be gone so the ones i need to worry about and maybe even not is stuff like this will be uh mostly gone because of the pickup cavity so uh, oh, okay yeah this is yeah. going to be an ace out of some type and we just uh, we're just going to decide that later but, That's cool. Uh, so the, the, in, a, in a sense, sometimes the wood will dictate for you what yeah, you turn it into, it, it, right? Exactly. That's awesome. Um, this piece was a lot bigger when I glued it on there, but uh, it was base size, but it wouldn't have been a good base spread. So I cut it down. So now it's I, a guitar. I book matched it. Yeah. And it's, um, it's a guitar. How cool is that? And it's got the real nice straight grained pattern that you see in ash versus the more curved and wavy grain pattern that you yeah. sometimes see yeah. on this material so yeah yeah it'll be really cool and like you were saying before if it happens to be somebody that is particular about wanting straight grain or wavy grain it's all something we can they request can, right yes exactly and and again down to the weight so um 
these spreads tend to get really light, especially when you're taking them down this far to, uh, to accommodate the drop top. But uh, once that's done, this, this guitar will be well under eight, eight pounds. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's great, be, that's awesome. And then we'll do some tinting on it. We can do tinting right directly to the wood. Um, we're using aniline dyes, for example, or we can undercoat it and then just uh, basically use it as a canvas and use different, different shades of, uh, of clear um, to give it a different effect. I, I, had a, I had a build for a gentleman back east that uh, ordered a legacy with a Buckeye Burl top, and he had this very specific purple shade. And uh, the purple that we had was too dark, so I started off with pink and started mixing some red into it until we got the right shade. And uh, he was so happy with it that he ordered an A-set. So now he's got a matching, got a matching, matching set of uh, an A-set and a legacy done in, uh, in Buckeye Burl. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really, really yeah, cool. I was really happy with it, too. <laughs> That's cool. really cool, man. So like we were talking about before, you know, when, once you take an electric guitar, you plug it into an amplifier, you plug it into your pedals, and then all of that goes into an amplifier. Um, I'd have to agree the majority of what you're hearing um, is going to be the sound of those pickups, right? Pickups. And it's pickups are a thing that certainly um, have a fair bit of like mysticism to them. Um, I would say they certainly do to yes. me. Um, and especially when you start getting into the world of hand wound pickups versus machine wound pickups and scatter wound this and that and yes. the other thing. And what you one of the things that you guys offer on the custom shop guitars is that you can get hand wound pickups. And I was just wondering, can you explain a little bit about what some of the advantages are there, or maybe it's just differences? But what okay. what is that hand wound, you know, sheen that goes on those pickups that you don't otherwise get? All right, so the hand wound pickups that we've been offering. Uh, since the very early days of the custom shop, which is, you know, uh, as you know, it's going to be about two years now in uh, 2019, um, is, the, is, is the fact that you're able to start off with a, with a standard model. For example, take the LB100, for example. It's got the, it's got the dual, dual coil uh, P-style pickup in it. And uh, customer will say, okay, well, I want that hand wound using form bar wire. So one of the wires that we, the main wire that we use is the vinyl uh, insulated wire in the production area, mm -hmm. which is what you basically start off with. That's a starting point for a pickup. So I, what I do is I take that pickup, I take all the data, for example, the direction of the wine, the polarity of the magnets, and I replicate that part, but I can use different materials. So one of the materials that we use is the form bar wire, which is the, uh, the lacquer insulated wire that was used back in the day. So we have that wire available to uh, it, it, in custom shop for, for pickup wines. Um, so as you know, the, the pickup wine process is normally done with a machine. So it's called a machine fed coil because the machine is very steadily going back and forth, feeding that, that bobbin nice and even. Um, one of the things that makes hand wound pickups sound different, or at least that's, this is the general consensus, is that when you're winding by hand, you're holding the wire uh, up against the bobbin and you're going, and since you're a person, you're not able to go steadily back and forth. So the wind onto the bobbin gets scattered. So that's where the term scatter wind comes from. Right. So um, that ability to be able to do a scatter wind as well as being able to tension the wire. So how hard you pull against the bobbin spinning around will mm -hmm. allow you to either put more turns or in some cases it's, uh, it's too soft and now you end up with a very spongy uh, coil which is not very good. You wanna keep a, the, the, a good consistent tension on the, on the wind. And the last thing would be not only the materials, not only the way that we wind it, but also how many wines we put on there. So right now we're offering a 5% over under winding service. Mm -hmm. So if somebody winds, uh, again, we'll take that LB100 as an example. Somebody wants to say, you know what? I, I want a, a, a little bit brighter sound. So can we underwind the bobbin by 5%? So right. we offer a 5% underwind. So what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take the number of turns, take, knock it down by 5%. Wind the pickup accordingly, and now you got that. Uh, maybe somebody will also want a little bit hotter output. So then we'll take that number, we'll add 5% to it. Uh, and then uh, again, the five, I wouldn't go more than 10% 
because um, you, you start adding a lot more wines to it. It starts getting really, really hot, and uh, it's going to get uh, just overbearing. Right, and the, right. the opposite is true on the underwinding side where it starts to get brighter, and then the output starts to suffer. So you have to be careful on how many wines you can add and take from certain type of pickups. And uh, that's what we do in the yeah, custom shop. Yeah. And the last thing that's really cool about the custom shop handwound pickup process is that I'm using Leo's old machine from the 1960s, which is a really basic machine. It's a it's a sewing machine motor that's tied to a couple pulleys and a counter, and you just sit there and put it on there, and it's very basic and rudimentary. It's, it's what most pickup winders that do this at home uh, start off with. And, uh, and Leo had his, and it was... Um, in the in the lab and i grabbed it and i said why don't we use this I add a little bit of mojo that dust that you were talking about right. earlier right? right so we use that machine um i even have his old desk lamp there which is kind of cool so people dig it when they come over and they say <laughs> oh that you know that's really cool that i'm using you know a little bit of leo dust in there too uh, yeah cool. most people might start off winding pickups with a machine similar to that but that's not just anybody's machine that no, you're using no, right <laughs> exactly i mean you got to think about how many how many bobbins and coils and what pickups were designed with that machine since he and was for using whom, it? Right? Yeah, who, exactly. Who did he make? You know, yeah, my goodness. That's, that's the mystery. That's the right. You know, we want to keep it that way. I, I wouldn't want to know exactly. I want to just keep guessing and just yeah. hoping and dreaming, going like, "Oh, this is cool." So. And it's cool because now, I mean, you get some hand wound pickups from yep. the GNL Custom Shop, yeah. and you're getting a little bit of that. Leo Fender DNA, yep. literally, in, you can, in that pickup yep, made can, by that machine. You can ask for specific uh, turns or a specific wire. I can use both wires, the wire that we use in the factory as well as the form bar wire. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We just do it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, Dave, that, that sounds really cool. I mean, uh, obviously, custom shop pickups, hand wound, um, Leo's machine, um, and so, again, from somebody that really doesn't know all that much about pickups other than just what they sound like, that sounds really hard, right? Winding, hand winding a custom shop pickup. Um, but um, that's just because I don't know anything about pickups. For you, what's the most difficult part about a uh, build process uh, in the custom shop? Well, definitely would have to be customer requests. So, and, and that happens very early on in the process where uh, a dealer will call us up and we'll call Ron at the sales department and he goes, hey, I got a guy here that wants to, uh, that wants to do a, uh, a, a legacy, a legacy with, uh, with, three, uh, with three P90 pickups. It couldn't be two, it couldn't be one, it has to be three. And um, can you do it? So the next, the, the next uh, logical step is Ron will approach me and go like, hey, we, want it. we got a customer here that, that wants this. Uh, done. So then uh, the engineering process, the, the first thing I go through in my mind is go, okay, can we fit those pickups in there? And uh, how much modification do we have to do to the pick guard to be able to accommodate these pickups? Uh, will we have to make our, our pickup route bigger in the body? So we start off with that. And then add to that the engineering that goes with it because I'm not doing the pick guards by hand. They're, doing, they're done on the CNC. So the CNC would require to have a program uh, modification to the existing program to be able to accommodate those pickups. And something a lot of people don't think about, right? Well, just, yeah. make, just make the pig guard different. Right. And, and it's like, and, well, it's not quite, quite that simple. And we've done that in the past where I'll take, uh, I, have, I have templates that I can just slap on there just to make something to try it out, to see, see the, what the feasibility of doing this. Is it going to fit? Is it going to sound okay? Is there enough room in that area for three P90 pickups, for example? Right, right. So uh, a lot of times it's just, uh, it's just physically impossible. And, uh, and that's what we have to come back to the dealer and to, to communicate to the customer that, hey, you know what, we could do this, but it's going to be really cramped in there. And we don't know if it's going to be enough, enough space to, because, you know, the pickups got to be in certain areas. They're, they're just not put in there just because they're fitted there. Yeah, they're there right. for a reason. So right. that's, that's one, of the, one of the challenges. But on the other side of that coin, it's also the, really, the part that's really exciting because it keeps me on my toes. It's like, all right, now I got to design... Um, a, a whole body program and uh, a pick guard route for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when now when somebody requests something like uh, I want a 24 fret neck, and you know, and I know it's coming, it's coming. It's, I can hear it. Um, that's going to be a, a, a big challenge because what what do we do? Do we 
redesign the whole neck to accommodate all 24 frets or do we do a a, a little standoff you know with a, with a shelf there that'll have the 23rd and 24th fret on there um, we we don't know so luckily that hasn't come up but it's it one day it'll come up you know yeah. like, what about a seven string uh, right, you know right, that's right. going to be a little bit out of our wheelhouse simply because we're not known for doing seven strings just like we're not known for doing acoustic guitar so i think those will probably be hard nose yeah yeah you know? and we've yeah. been there too right yeah. we've had we've had uh you know we've worked with customers to do gnl custom shop instruments before and we've had some interesting ones where we get together and we come up with something that hasn't necessarily been done before and it's like cool no problem we can do this and there's been times where it's like hey a couple of these things are not necessarily the the easiest for us to pull off the easiest to do and really we just maintain that open communication with everybody um, where you know we we're talking to the customers about it and then we talk to you guys about it and see what can happen and uh, at the end of the day you know we reach an agreement for everybody and it works out really really well um we've uh i mean in in all the ones that, that we've done it's it's always really really impressive when the gnl custom shops that we order for customers or even for inventory um, but most of the ones that we do are directly for customers that call us up and say hey you know this is what i want to get ordered um yep. and it always comes through and we you know we always can't help but spend a few minutes just awing at it because they always come through so so beautifully um and this is a hundred percent true everybody that's gotten a, a GNL custom shop from us has just been absolutely over the moon about it yeah um, well thank you yeah um, some of the changes that that we offer and do sometimes actually come out of uh, not even a request from a consumer will like, like for example I have one here um, this is uh, a Comanche no, but it has but a humbucker in, the, so in it, yeah. we're calling it HZZ. So this is just something that we thought of in the custom shop. And you go, hey, you know, what if we put a humbucker in the bridge position of the Comanche? Would that work? So we go, oh, let's try it. So we, uh, this one was hand done. So what I did is I, um, I have the ability to block out certain processes on the CNC. So when we were making this pick art, I told it not to do the bridge route. And then I did this, uh, this route here by hand. By hand. Yeah, uh, uh, so that we can accommodate the humbucker and HCZ. So we've sold, we've sold a few of these already and uh, it's gonna be something that we're gonna, that we're gonna make available. Um, obviously the next step would be, how about an HZH? You know, or uh, I, it, right. So it, it's it's just a, it's just a matter of coming up with an idea or or being presented an idea of a combination that is normally not done. And um, sometimes we'll start off with the customer's idea and then realize, well, there's certain parts that we can do, but there's other parts that are going to be um, mechanically not possible simply because of the room or just the aesthetics of the instrument where we're going to put a you know for example a toggle switch a, a toggle switches for the most part only have three positions although i've seen a new one that has six positions but we're, we're not yeah, there yet so yeah. um we, we can we can alter in conjunction with the customer's request something that the customer will be happy with. And, yeah. and we've done that a couple times too so that's that's, that's really yeah. that's really cool yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's awesome all right, cool. Well, Dave, um, here's a question I have for you. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's, it's clear you, you love your job. You love what yes. you do. How can you not, right? We love just coming here to visit. Um, but if you had to pick kind of one thing um, that is your favorite part of building a guitar, or maybe like a guilty pleasure in building a guitar, right? Like, I don't know how to build a guitar, but I imagine um, I'd probably really enjoy relicking instruments because that seems like yeah, it'd be a fun, fun way to get your, your, your energy and yeah, your yeah. aggression out. Uh, what about for you? Well, for me, it would probably have to be sanding wood. Um, okay. It's... It's very tedious, it's time consuming, but deep down when you get to a certain part of sanding and you're halfway, more than halfway there, it's just very therapeutic for me. So I, uh, I enjoy it. I, I'll, do a, I'll do a batch of necks, for example, and I'll do the parts that I don't like the most first on all of them. That way all I have left to do is just pure sanding, hand sandpaper, and just, I, I don't know, I just find it very, very, therapeutic and peaceful so i would probably say that's one of the biggest guilty pleasures is, is just sanding wood um 
and then the other one would be setting up a guitar and and playing it and plugging it in for the first time and going like, wow, this is really cool. It's done. The finished product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. like this is what I yep. this is what I did. Check me it. me yeah. and my team yep. did this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can only imagine. That's got to be a source of pride too. Definitely, right? definitely. Yeah. definitely. Well, definitely. and so along those lines, right? Um, what is kind of what is the thing that perhaps you're most proud of? Um, or happiest about, um, or what's been the greatest success of you spearheading this relatively new endeavor for GNL, this GNL Custom Shop Department that, as you said before, is right. two years old now and yep. already going strong and really only getting better and better. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, it has to be at the end of the day, it's an instrument that is being played. So it's um, it's the it's the knowing that. The customer gets something that they envisioned initially and together we went through this journey, if you will, that ends up with an instrument that he or she has the ability to just pick up and, and start building memories with it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. these instruments are being played with that, with that end in mind. So for me, it's very rewarding that it's, a, it's an instrument that is started with an idea or just a, just a notion and we work through it together we started it in the process and then there was sanding in there, you know, a lot of building. Sometimes there's a little bit of distressing and relicking, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a guitar that's being played. So that's, that's very rewarding for me. That's, yeah. that's the, the culmination of the, of the effort and, uh, and the end result. That's cool, yeah, and you can yep. see, I mean, you see a lot of GNLs uh, on stage, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's big, big stages playing from the yep. sold out crowds or everything to local, uh, yep. coffee shops and, and stuff like that. And it really is a player's musician, which getting back to what we keep saying, you know, that's what Leo wanted to do from the beginning. That's what he always did. That's what he was known for, right? He made instruments for musicians. Yep. Um, and it's very clear that you guys are, are still doing that. It's, you know, it's a player's instrument, um, yep. just at, you know, a, a bit of an elevated level. It's the, it's the pinnacle of what we're doing here and still, uh, making instruments that are very playable affordable and uh and just really cool to make yeah that's yeah. really 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 cool well dave i want to thank you for you know thank you for your time and for, you for answering these questions this was really really cool it's awesome to get to know a little bit about what's going on with the gnl no custom problem. shop um of course if you have any more questions feel free to contact us at music store live we're always happy to help you out um, and looking forward to the next time we're back here, as always. Yeah, come back anytime. Love being at the GNL factory here on Fender Avenue. How cool is that? Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Dave. Signing out.